It's Tarantula Tuesday. Canthoscuria geniculata, or you may know it by its common names, Brazilian white knee tarantula, the giant white knee, or the white banded tarantula. This is a fast growing new world tarantula that comes from the northern forests of Brazil. This species can reach up to a solid 8 inch leg span and has been known to reach nearly a 4 inch leg span within a year. Females of this species can live up to 20 years, though males tend to only live about 4 years on average. Being a New World species, this tarantula does have urticating hairs that can be quite irritating. And being a nervous and defensive tea, they do not hesitate to kick them. This tarantula would rather retreat to its hide when it feels threatened before threatening to bite, but it is prone to kick up some hairs while it is retreating. Be careful not to get these urticating hairs in your eyes, nose, or mouth, as that can be very uncomfortable and possibly dangerous. This tea is an aggressive eater and will pounce on any prey that enters its habitat with ferocity and force, making it one of my all-time favorite feeding responses. The only time my white knees refuse food is when they are in pre-molt, and even then I have had some instances where slings and juveniles ate right up to a day or two before molting. The husbandry for this species is pretty typical of all New World terrestrial teas. They require an enclosure that provides more width than height. In fact, providing too much height to a heavy spider like this can be deadly. You don't want the tarantula to be able to climb up the side of the enclosure to the top and have a long way to fall as they could easily rupture their abdomen and die. I usually fill my enclosures up at least halfway with substrate, sometimes even a little more, and provide a hide and a water dish. This tea tends to enjoy burrowing deep into the substrate as slings, but even with a deep burrow, mine stays out in sight a lot of the time. As they grow larger, they become less skittish and more prone to stay out on display. With their bright white bands contrasting against the deep black of this spider, they are a gorgeous and mesmerizing species. I keep their substrate dry, but once a week I will overflow the water dish to ensure about a third or at least a corner of the enclosure has damp substrate. But I will let it dry out before I overflow the water dish again. The temperature I keep this tarantula at is the same as most of my other spiders, an average room temperature between 68 degrees to 74 degrees. If you're comfortable, they're comfortable. As far as feeding, I feed my spiderlings small crickets or roaches twice a week until they refuse food during pre-molt. If I do not have any prey small enough, I will pre-kill the prey before dropping it in and sometimes cut it in half and only feed them part. As they grow larger, I provide a small to medium cricket or roach no larger than its abdomen at least once a week and sometimes twice depending on their size and appetite. Once they're juveniles, I will feed them three or four medium crickets at least once a week. And as adults, I usually feed eight to 15 large crickets or two or three large dubia roaches, sometimes a few more, at least once every couple of weeks, depending on the size of the tarantula's abdomen. This species is a very dramatic eater and quickly pounces on its prey, sometimes even rolling itself over in the heat of the catch, so it is exciting to watch it take down prey. The only time mine will refuse a meal is when it's in pre -molt. This is one of the species I am always sure to wear gloves and a long sleeve shirt when I am rehousing, unboxing, or cleaning out its enclosure. I find this species urticating hairs particularly irritating and try to avoid being exposed to them whenever possible. Because of my sensitivity to this species hair, I do not handle my age in Nicolata. That along with their nervous demeanor and propensity to quickly bolt when startled puts this tea in the look but don't touch category for me. Overall, this is a gorgeous tarantula and a staple in the hobby. No collection is complete without one of these on display. Luckily, they are usually very inexpensive and readily available. I think a few of mine I even received as freebies when I placed an order for other tarantulas. So if you don't have one of these gorgeous tarantulas, I would highly suggest adding one to your collection. With a large size, unique appearance, and amazing feeding response, 
It's hard not to include this species in my top 10 all-time favorite tarantulas. What's up Tarantula Collective? My name is Richard and thank you so much for watching this episode. I think I'm just going to have to break down into a top 10 video of my favorite tarantulas because I feel like at the end of every Tarantula Tuesday I say this is one of my favorite tarantulas. But the reality is I probably wouldn't have a tarantula in my collection if I wasn't already a big fan of it. So maybe we could break it down into like a top 10 new world, top 10 old world, top 10 overall, something like that. So uh, check out those videos in the future. Also, if you have any other suggestions for tarantulas you'd like to see me cover in uh, Tarantula Tuesday, be sure to leave those suggestions down below in the comments section or any ideas you have for any other videos that we could do here. I'd be more than happy to have your input. This really is one of my favorite tarantulas. And to be honest, I wasn't really sold on it at first. I passed over getting one of these teas many times. And in, like I said earlier, it, it actually Actually, the first one I got was a freebie that someone just threw in. I didn't even know it was coming. But after seeing its feeding response and those bright red hairs with uh, the black body and white stripes on its legs, I kind of fell in love and have added two or three more to my collection since then. So I've got them like at all different stages in their life cycle at the moment. They're very cool. They're very aggressive eaters. They're a lot of fun to watch. And even the slings, my slings a lot of times are right out in the open, ready for food. And they're very easy to care for. Now they look a lot like the nondochromatis. Uh, there are some small differences that you'd be able to, to see when you look at them closely. Even having nondus in my collection, you know, I really wanted to have an agent colada as well. I really wanted to show you guys my snakes that I got over here, or at least show you the rack that I built for them. Uh, but unfortunately, a couple of the snakes are a little stressed out at the moment, so I've got their enclosures covered, and I'm trying not to, you know, mess with them at all. Uh, you know, I don't want to take, uh, I don't want to take them out of their enclosures and handle them, or you know, shine bright lights or anything like that in there for at least a week or so kind of get them acclimated to their new enclosures and the new environment and uh, get them uh, starting to eat because <laughs> a couple of them haven't even eaten yet we're working on it and once they're ready to, to be on camera I will be sure to share them with you guys and as always if you found this video helpful or entertaining or informative or you know whatever just be sure to hit that like button something youtubers live off of I guess so like subscribe comment all that jazz if you don't mind I appreciate it of course we've always got our Facebook group if you want to come in join our conversation we'd love to have you in there uh, you can follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter. Uh, we're even on Reddit these days. And I almost forgot, I still got some t-shirt stickers and pins available. If you'd like to purchase some of those, you can find the details in our Facebook group under the announcements. And as always, members of our Facebook group get 10% off their orders from Fear Not Tarantulas. So just send a moderator a message to get that discount code. And if you'd like to support the Tarantula Collective, we do have a Patreon now. Links for all of this will be below in the description. Ooh, some tarantulas are out. You know, we just had a, uh, a giveaway last night. We did a live stream here on the YouTube channel because we crossed a thousand subscribers. Actually, we're over uh, 1,100 now, which is kind of exciting. In between announcing the contest and, and actually having the contest, we gained another 100 plus subscribers. So the channel's growing really quickly, and that's thanks only to you guys. I really appreciate all the support and love and, and comments and everything you've been sending my way. And in case you haven't seen it, check out the newest issue of Spinneret Magazine. We actually sponsored that this month, so we got a nice, cool, full-page ad in there. So shout out to Spinneret Magazine. It's a very cool publication. If you haven't checked it out, I highly suggest it. It's very interesting. It covers all kinds of things dealing with the hobby from uh, different species of tarantulas to uh, artists and YouTubers and, and all kinds of different aspects of the hobby. So I highly suggest that. Check it out. Well, like I said, just about wraps it up. Thank you again for watching this episode of Tarantula Tuesday. Tune in next Tuesday. We'll be doing another one. Uh, and also, I'm going to be trying to upload a second video every week, somewhere between like Friday or Saturday or whenever it gets done. <laughs> I don't know. I'm a busy guy. But if I don't, there will always be a Tarantula Tuesday. As always, it's been real and it's been fun. And I will see you next Tuesday. Trippin' Aquafina, I'm sippin' 15, kept a weapon on me Flow make digits, I'm on my business, stack chicken like what it's gon' be Crew in the cut, hey, you want us to run when I tell a bit peace Love is love, love is love, adios Bindo, bindo with the switch again, boy deliver like he heffin' it Core with digits, give him estimates, summer sauce for my Benjamins there's some cricket singing to us right now. Of course, as soon as I said that, stop singing. <laughs>